Warning, this video will contain images that some viewers may find disturbing. An American werewolf in London follows the story of New York City native David Kessler as he backpacks across the moors in Yorkshire, England with his friend Jack Goodman. After a quick stop at the local pub and a run-in with some of the locals, David and Jack are attacked by a werewolf. Jack and the iconic horror movie monster die during the event, however David is bitten. Over the course of the movie, we see David deal with not only the monster inside him, but also Jack's death and his growing grief over what happened. You see, Jack is cursed to live as an undead figure for as long as the werewolf exists, and urges David to kill himself before the next full moon to not only destroy the werewolf and its curse, but also to prevent David from killing or passing the curse to anyone else. David is assessed and soon released from the hospital he was brought to, and after meeting with a nurse called Alex who he met whilst in care, David transforms in a home during the next full moon. David kills six people as a werewolf, and the next morning after realising what happened, he tries to get himself arrested so that he can't hurt anyone else. He confesses his love for Alice, but pushes her away so that she doesn't get hurt or take on the curse herself. David makes a plan to end his life, however gets too scared and doesn't go through with it, which prompts Jack, who throughout the movie has tormented David as an undead soul, to appear to David outside of an adult movie theatre. He shows him the undead souls of the victims from the previous night, and they all urge David to end his life and destroy the curse, but David ends up transforming inside the movie theatre. He kills the police inspector who is investigating his case and many others whilst roaming around London. In the end, David is trapped by the police. Alex attempts to appeal to his humanity, but the curse is too strong and David lunges at her, getting shot and killed in the process. The film ends with Alex mourning David's death. An American Werewolf in London was lauded by fans and critics alike, scoring 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb and 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. But today, I'm going to look at what made an American Werewolf in London such a success by analysing the first werewolf transformation scene of the movie. My name is Jake, and this is an analysis of the werewolf transformation scene in An American Werewolf in London. The scene opens with a shot of a full moon zooming inwards from an extreme long shot to a long shot. This is a clear indication that the moon is of significance during this scene. Since the idea of a werewolf transforming under a full moon is a widely known horror genre convention, the audience understands the implication and is able to draw their own conclusion that the horror is about to commence. The scene then transitions to a shot of the main character, zooming inwards from a medium close-up to a close-up, during which the character explodes in a flurry of pain and agony. The camera then slowly moves upwards and away from the character as he writhes in pain, tearing his shirt and screaming for help. These shots position as far away from the character as he transforms, reflecting how powerless any of the audience is to actually help him. Multiple times during the scene, the main character breaks the fourth wall and reaches to the camera as if he were pleading for the audience to help him. This keeps the audience involved and attached to the character and helps create an emotional connection where practical effects may not. The scene then transitions into multiple close-ups and extreme close-ups of the main character to draw focus to the terror and the fear that they are experiencing. The transformation employs over 30 different camera shots, which allows the audiences to intimately connect with both the character and the effects themselves, but also provides little breathing room in regards to the action as there is a new shot on average every four seconds. The choice to use close-ups and extreme close-ups throughout the majority of this scene is effective as the intimacy of the scene makes the audience feel uncomfortable, however they can't look away as the scene is becoming so gruesome to a point it's becoming spectacular. An American Werewolf in London was released in 1981 prior to the mainstream influence of the torture porn genre in which excessive gore became a typical convention of horror. The use of practical effects in this scene as opposed to computer generated imagery is a smart decision by the production team as practical effects are better at generating an emotional response due to audiences connecting with and identifying with tangible objects as opposed to digital ones and forming an emotional bond with effects within the scene. The transformation was created prior to the invention and mainstream use of computer-generated imagery, meaning alternative methods had to be employed for it to be convincing. Special makeup effects artist Rick Baker created the effects using a mix of techniques, including injecting into small plungers within the plastic models to create the effect of hands and feet elongating. He also filmed hair being pulled out from underneath a fleshy sheet and reversed the footage to create the rapid hair growth effect. At one point, the actor who plays David Kessler, the main protagonist, was buried up to his neck and a body was built around him. These techniques were effective in that they had a lasting effect on audiences, with it being described as the most visceral experience in prosthetic horror to date. Not many films had employed this level of creativity when creating horror effects, leading some to say that Rick Baker revolutionised the use of practical effects. The critical acclaim that this scene garnered proves that it's not indebted to changes within the creative industry, and that it notably holds up over time. 
The use of sound within this scene effectively complements the visuals largely through juxtaposition. The brutal and disturbing transformation is juxtaposed by the slow and unthreatening diegetic song playing in the background, Blue Moon by Dean Martin. Blue Moon, you saw me stand. The song has a lot of connections to the scene. The title of the song refers to moons, with a full moon being the cause of a werewolf transformation, as well as a blue moon, which is a rare lunar occurrence just as the werewolf transformation only takes place rarely. However, the choice of song is significant as it matches the pace of the scene whilst also juxtaposing the shocking visuals with a calming atmosphere. The song carries the scene at a certain pace and doesn't cause it to feel too rushed or too slow, meaning audiences can watch it and feel significantly moved by it, but not get bored by how long the scene is. Notably, the scene ends on the image of a blue moon, with the moon transformation being a direct parallel to the main character's transformation on screen. The inclusion of Blue Moon in this scene is effective due to the fact that compared to the scene it is used in, it is ironic in its meaning. The original song refers to the writer finding their true love under the light of the Blue Moon, whereas in this scene all the main character finds is terror, brutality and pain. This jarring contrast places the audience in a position where they feel out of place and can therefore relate to the main character in the scene. The unexpected nature of this juxtaposition is also effective as it catches the audience off guard and makes them highly tuned in to all the action that is taking place on the screen. Calm music over top dark, horrific visuals holds the audience's attention and focus for longer, meaning they then notice more of what is taking place in the scene. This, combined with the constant non-stop screaming from the central character and the diegetic sounds of the bones cracking, effectively conveying the pain and misery experienced during the transformation to the audience, creates an atmosphere where the audience is disgusted but also can't look away. The intense use of screaming and pleading in this scene plays on the paradox of tragedy, as it generates uncomfortable emotions to experience such as pity and fear. However, the audience takes pleasure in experiencing them. Production for An American Werewolf in London took place across the UK in 1981, including in multiple villages in Wales, the Black Mountains in Wales, and also in Piccadilly Circus in London. The transformation scene within the context of the narrative takes place in a standard British home, and the implication of the transformation is that everything is atypical and unconventional. From the typical horror monster of a werewolf transforming in a bland home in England, to an American man being the one to transform. Everything about the scene is not what audiences would expect, drawing back on how everything is out of place and that this atmosphere of uncomfortable the visual style of the scene encompasses how the scene looks, sounds and feels to an audience and in the context of the movie, this scene takes place in an unassuming living room in the 1980s. The set is well lit and has in what could at the time of the production be considered a modern aesthetic. This is significant as its design is meant to accurately replicate a 1980s living room to audiences and create realism. In doing so, it grounds the film in a certain level of reality, which in turn prevents it from becoming more fantasy than horror. This grounding then creates a level of familiarity for audiences and more effectively allows them to place themselves in the scene, which may heighten the horror. The unassuming, friendly family living room being used as a backdrop for the dark and horrific transformation all also moves the scene from horror into surrealism, as the idea of this taking place in your own living room makes the scene to an extent unbelievable but not inconceivable to audiences. As mentioned previously, the set is well lit and in combination with the use of close-up camera shots, this makes the scene intimate for the audience, but it also means that they are able to see every change in the scene, and this is where the surrealism roots itself, in inadvertent audience participation. Whether or not you want to see it, you are going to see it regardless. Thank you so much for watching. On the right, you'll find all the sources for theories and quotes cited within this video. If you found this video interesting, please feel free to give me a thumbs up, share and favorite this video and also subscribe to my channel where hopefully I will be seeing you again soon. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.